Hello everyone, I hope you have a good time at the conference and, unlike me, you are there in person. I would like to present you the paper I wrote with Radoslav, summarizing 5 years of organizing strategy card game AI competition. Most editions were co-located here with COG. First, I would like to start with a brief description of the game. We called it The Legends of Code and Magic and this is a very simplified collectible card game. You probably know or heard of a few CCGs, for example Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone. In comparison, in Logum, we have only a few keywords and card effects are deterministic, so the game remains relatively simple for programming AI agents. During these five years we developed three versions of the game, so let us start with a bit of the historical overview. We developed Legends of Code and Magic in 2018 as an official community contest on the Coding Game platform, with huge help of the Coding Game team, especially regarding graphics. The game was heavily inspired by The Elder Scrolls Legends, which I think is a fantastic CCG. We started with two Coding Game competitions, one 24-hour sprint, where the players did not know the game before, and after the sprint there was 30 days of the marathon contest. As you can see, the number of participants is huge compared to what we normally see on academic competitions. The site with so large community and advertisement really makes a difference. Organizing this event was a little bit stressful, but overall very nice experience. Then, we modified the game rules to make it at least slightly distinct from the coding game version and spent three years organizing contests at Conference on Games and also Congress on Evolutionary Computation. The number of submissions plummeted and also keep in mind that many of the submissions were from coding gamers who just updated their agents. I would even say that organizing such competitions is depressive at times, when you are really struggling for participants. Finally, we decided that the game became stagnant and there is need for some push and novelty. Also, please note that since 2021 there is some increase in submission numbers, also due to the popularity of neural network algorithms. The last contest was totally dominated by Enhance, an and Biteral team was a clear winner for Log 1.5 and Side Organized 1.2. So we decided to stop organizing this competition. But all game versions are still playable and available online at Coding Game, so you can hop in and test your agents against other players on public leaderboards. Now let me introduce you a little to the game itself. The game contains 160 predefined cards. There are four types of cards, including creatures and three types of items. The creatures are the cards you place on your side of the table and they stay there, in future turns attacking opponent's creatures or the opponent's avatar itself. Green items are cards that are meant to boost your own creatures, and red items are to harm opponent's creatures. Blue items are basically red items, but they can also be used on the opponent avatar. There are six keywords directly copied from the Elder Scrolls Legends. If creature with breakthrough kills its target, the excess damage is dealt to the opponent avatar. Creatures with charge may attack in the same turn they are summoned. Drain keyword gives more help to the player avatar for each point of creature's damage. Creatures with guard, in so known as taunt, prevent opponent creatures to attack others. Little kills target creature immediately if it is damaged by at least one point. Ward is a perfect counter as it completely blocks damage of the first hit. There are also three effects with numerical values, regarding bonus card draw next turn and health modifiers for our avatar and the opponent. Now a few words about the communication protocol. 
it is based entirely on standard input output so we do not pose any restrictions on the programming language of the agent the code on the left is the simplest possible python bot reading all information about the current game state and making a pass move we have information about all the cards on the table and in our hands about the avatar's health and some other data as the output we have to print a set of commands we wish to apply in the right order separated by semicolons there are a few types of commands sum is responsible for drawing a creature card with given id from our hand to the table attack takes an id of our creature and the id of the opponent's creature that is the attack's target minus one is a special id meaning directly attacking the opponent's avatar lastly we have use which takes an item card from our hand and uses it on a given target depending on the items type our creature opponent's creature or opponent's avatar this description is accurate for the initial version of the game used in coding game contest in this version each match starts with the draft phase similar to the one commonly used in ccg's arena mode each player has to build his deck choosing one card from three available choices however for lobby we introduced a fair arena mode where the choices are the same for both players but of course the players do not know the choices of the opponents we can see two bots drafting cards and after the draft the main battle phase begins Both players draw creatures from their hands to the board, use them to attack other creatures or the opponent avatar, buff with green items, and so on and so on, until the life of one of the players reaches zero. The next version, called 1.2, changes only one thing instead of a single lane containing six creatures now we have two lanes with max three creatures each and the rules are that a creature on the left lane can only attack opponent creatures on the left lane and the creatures on the right lane can only attack opponent creature on the right lane this of course changes the size and shape of the game tree but also shifts importance of certain keywords especially little and guard which is now responsible for protecting only one lane the communication protocol also changes as each summon command gets another parameter telling on which lane the creature should be summoned so the agents are not backward compatible the huge changes came with the version 1.5 developed partially as a student master thesis project first is that we abandon the draft phase based on the predefined and globally known set of cards we found it too simple to master as many players just hard-coded a priority list of cards to pick and this was enough to perform well in the battle phase now we simulate a standard constructed mode where the players can freely construct their decks choosing 30 cards from the entire available card set the trick is that the card set is procedurally generated and for each game the choice has to be made from 120 cards which most likely were never seen before of course lot players use the same card set this is a very important change but not the only one previously the game did not have any area of effect as all cards usage concerned only one entity we changed that there is a new property that can have three values target lane one lane two for the creatures target works as previously described lane one summons a copy of the creature to the same lane 
while lane 2 summons a copy of the creature to the other lane. Items with area effect have effect on multiple creatures. Target affects only target creature. Lane 1 affects all creatures on the same lane and the same side of the board as the original target. Lane 2 affects all creatures on all lanes and the same side of the board as the original target. This new type of cards is very important, very strong and heavily influences how the game should be played. So when it comes to the academic competitions, we received 22 unique submissions. All of them are briefly described in the paper with the proper references to the publications or thesis. For the sake of describing the agents, we divided them into three categories. The most populated one contains surge-based approaches, generally minmax or MCTS with some evaluation function of an handmade and action pruning to allow better tree surge. Most agents only simulated on turn and the opponent on board response, but some tried to surge deeper. Common feature is detecting of winning move and applying it when found. Bots in this category were written in all kinds of languages, C++, C Sharp, Java, and makes use of optimized game engine implementations. Next, we have agents based on neural networks. Although there was no GPU available during the contest, these were used during the offline training. A variety of approaches were tried, including proximal policy optimization, LSTMs and Q-learning. Not surprising, all bots were written in Python. Lastly, we have just other agents. Mostly, some handcrafted decision trees, rule-based approaches, cards orderings, etc. These approaches work instantly and do not require implementing the game engine. Mostly, written in Python and we had a single JavaScript entrance. Lastly, I want to talk about our experience as long-term competition organizers and give some hopefully useful hints how to do this right. First, it is nice to have an existing computer game as a team. Not only it makes competition more appealing to people familiar with the game, but also helps with developing the rules. But be careful here, not all games that are nice for human play will be good as programming games. Next, instead of making entire game using your own engine, you can use available API like Coding Game, which will solve multiple issues for you, including communication protocol and graphics. As a downside, there are some restrictions you have to be compliant with. Also, you can gain a larger player base at the beginning. An AI competition may be a great opportunity for various research and especially student projects. This is always a great proposition for a non-standard and possibly engaging thesis topic. The common problem with competitions is the fairness and the certainty of the obtained results. I won't point to anyone specific, but really, you should provide a large number of games with solid confidence intervals to prevent any possible complaints and other statements. We also encourage you to search for foundings from cloud computer providers. It really works. And because we no longer plan to organize any Legends of Code and Magic competitions, this is finally the time I say thank you and goodbye. But fear not. If you like the card games and look for an interesting AI competition while Logme is gone, there is a brand new Tales of Tribute AI competition. So, see you next year playing cards again.